you aren't being a proper woman, therefore you must be a witch. You must be a witch. Happy full moon. It's the February full moon. I forgot to check and see which one that is. Risa, do you know offhand what's the February full moon? What's its name? It's a, it's a snow moon or um, also like a hunger moon. Ooh. A hunger moon. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I'm kind of more interested in this, this hunger moon business. What... Uh, Where'd you get that? You know, it's from the the farmer's almanac, which I I know is um, like a probably a pretty awful just amalgamation uh, with very little attribution of many indigenous histories. Um, but it was where I went before here to sort of just see what is the what is the name that farmers have landed on as the one that they're borrowing from that feels right in North America. And they have a list and um, Snow Moon is at the top and where Amy and I are right now. Amy and I are right now. That feels appropriate. We're deep under snow. Just days of days of endless snow. Just white heaps as far as the eye can see. Yeah. But what, it, what does that mean to you, Hunger Moon, for February? I mean, I, we definitely see it in the animals here, right? It, this is a hungry time. Um, they're coming in, they're coming in closer. Their stores have been eaten through, you know, we were sort of wondering how much longer the cold will last. You know, May and I went out, um, she's like two and a half now. And we took pockets full of like carrots and seeds and snacks. And we put them in front of any little hole where we could see footprints on this walk that we took and by the time we circled back at the end of the walk there was like a million new footprints like everyone had rushed out as soon as we walked by and like stuffed their cheeks and (laughs) dove back underground i think that's a wonderful way to celebrate the hunger moon (laughs) yeah it's funny when you look at your life and you're like oh i'm practicing ritual all the time in a way that before I think when you and I started it would have to be like pretty intentional to try to realize what the rituals were that we were doing that were helping us and healing us and now it's yeah it's it's more deeply integrated for me yeah (laughs) maybe it's the same I don't know (laughs) yeah I think that's something that you and I have definitely talked about maybe on the podcast maybe (laughs) between ourselves but this this idea of like doing less spell, <laughs> less spell work and more just like doing and it being spell work, if that makes sense, you know, like ritualizing, yeah. um, me ritualizing, filling my bird feeders, for example, it's like high magic to me these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, for me, that's. It's one, it's just being so much more in touch with the present moment and the sort of flickering peace that's there that I am more in in profound need of now than other times in my life. Just full pandemic anxiety. I'm just trying to find that little flame of the present more and more. And I think making rituals out of my just daily life is really helping with that so something that i've been thinking about that i think is very related to that is like the very 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 basic um tools of witchcraft you know like obviously we all love setting up our altars and you know getting things and different tarot decks and this and that but these days for me it's been all about the moon and water You know, again, like you don't need to have like some embroidered cloak. You really can just have a glass of water. (laughs) You really totally can. I I love um, Sarah Godestiner's book for that. I really had so much fun talking to her and listeners. If you heard that episode, I'm sure you're listeners of her podcast as well, Moonbeaming. But the book is so good. It's like even just right now, all I'm doing from her book is the tarot spreads for each phase of the moon Mm. and just like giving myself 10, 10 minutes to like do a spread and write about it. And 
I don't know, just that, like just that pace with the moon is giving me a lot right now that I didn't have like my tarot reading as like a therapy tool and a exploration of my interior space tool was like all over the map and how I would use it and super intense sometimes and then forget it and then have cards everywhere and then be doing it for every question in a day and then forget about it. And I, this is like a little bit of a healthier rhythm, I think, following <laughs> the rhythm of the moon. <laughs> One of my girlfriends and I, you know, there's the the sort of standard the the clarifier, you know, when you're when you're pulling cards and you know, you just want one little bit of extra information, mm. you know, you pull the clarifier. She and I have added the terrifier, which is like <laughs> <laughs> in addition to the clarifier <laughs> this is like this is the card you pull and it tells you like this is what you really have to be on the lookout for so I think <laughs> it's, been, it's been fun to add that to but just just to say one more thing about the moon is that like I, I I realized that like at every point in my life no matter where I've been in the world or in my life like I've always been to been able to just like new moons excluded, but then they just make the shot, the stars shine brighter. But yeah, the moon has always been there for me to like go and look at. And even now I'll just be mm -hmm. like, you know what? I just need to go and look at the moon for a minute. You know, if I'm sad or angry and uh, I find yeah. that it helps. And it's something that almost everybody has access to, you know, regardless of your economic situation, regardless yeah. of, you know, what other crazy is going on in your life, you definitely can just go and put your face toward the moon, you know? That to yeah. me has been very healing. Oh, just let that little bit of reflected light. Yeah, that reflected light shine on you. Now, so I have realized things about my relationship with like the full moon and the full moon. Do you feel like you have a good handle these days, Amy, on like what, how does the full moon affect you? How does the new moon affect you? Because I think it's different for everybody, right? Oh, yeah. Def everything's different for everybody. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know right? if I've, <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I've noticed it affecting me in some like paranormal way, but certainly I make conscious decisions about maybe starting something new or finishing something up. Um, and so it's affected my life, but in an intentional and way. Where do you start? As a general rule, if yeah. I if I want to start something, I'll, I'll do my best to start it around the new moon. And, and again, some people have different ideas about that too. They're like, never start anything on the full moon or never start anything on the new moon. And uh, but to me, I just I like that opens yeah. the the blank page of the new moon. I think and. Mm -hmm. again to me a full moon is like it's it's so bright it's like oftentimes you can't sleep so <laughs> if you need to wrap up yeah. a detail then then that would be the time to do it oh, I am in the same boat I'm I I'm so much more comfortable and brave and excited I think in a new moon it's only by trying to notice it this year that I do think I see a rhythm there and it has to do with my period and all of that sort of stuff when it syncs up but but, but and I, I I had always thought of a full moon as a time where I always end up out late at shows having a crazy night like a full moon is like everyone is just like bright and bewitched but now I also have been hit with the reality of the fact that like a really bright light makes shadows darker too and I, I I saw that go around in a witchy email or something this week and I was like I have been thinking about this so much that the the full moon for me is not just this like joy and brightness it's the shadows are much much darker yeah, I spoke to a, a dog groomer that I took Bijou to once, and she also ran like a, like a, a you know, like a kennel when you're on vacation, you, you put your dog yeah. with her, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, dog hotel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she was like, um, you know, our conversation, one thing led to another, and I was asking her about the full moon and the animals. <laughs> and, uh, and as, you do. as one does. <laughs> Um, and yeah, she was like, yeah, definitely. The, the animals are like much, behave much differently during a full moon than they do at any other time. Um, yeah. so yeah, it is fascinating yeah. to sort of watch. And again, it's something that we can all, 
pay attention to. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to mm. research anything, even like you just need to like look up. Yeah, or expend any of your like already so overdrawn resources of labor and and emotion and just energy and awakeness. Like I I just want to give any listener the freedom to think of this practice not as another fucking to-do on your list. This is about sort of lighting your to-dos up with the moon and just sort of letting letting the ritual sink into your life. And yeah, just looking up at the moon, offering a glass of water to the night or to yourself or to your spirit or to your ancestors. Like that's yeah. enough. That can be okay. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean, that's a great point. Like when you ritualize the things that you have to do anyway, like a floor scrubbing, you know, is the one that I bring mm. up often, you know, um, then it's like, it, 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 it it's no more shit you got to do. It doesn't mean more shit you got to do. It's something that you had to do anyway, but now it's magic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's just something in this idea of hunger moon that for me, that's like, you, you don't, you don't have to do anything extra right now. Just, just survive, you know, just, just, just warm your hands, drink a glass of water, be on this earth, breathe, survive, you know, we'll, we'll get to spring. We'll get to the windows open and the dusting and the spring cleaning and the sort of joyous upturn of all of that and things melting, but like, we're not there yet. Yeah. That's why, again, like I'm such a big fan of the, the wheel of the year. It's like a marker of, um, mm -hmm. you know, do this, then do this, you know, like obviously we think of spring and spring cleaning, but um, just before this hunger moon, we had Imbolc, which to me, it's like, you know, sort of opening your eyes and really looking around and starting your plan. You know, in spring, you're going to be digging the soil and ideally planting your seeds. But at Imbolc, you're like, what am I going to plant this year? You know, so mm -hmm. for me, this this snow moon, this this hunger moon is is like really exciting in the way that my mom always used to say plans are free. You, know? <laughs> you can you can plan a thousand trips around the world you know it doesn't cost you anything but you do get a certain joy out of making plans and if you actually bring those plans into action then even better yeah i love that we're we're definitely at the planning stage of 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 our seeds right now are you planning your garden this year we're planning i think so many people are planning like a, a step further a bigger garden a, a more ambitious effort we're We've we, we've we've got our organic nearby farmer seeds, and we're setting up our little heat pads, and starting to think of which ones we could start first, and you know, fixing broken parts of the house to put seed trays. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think you know, twenty spring twenty twenty was like the year of the the windowsill. Um, you know, like regrowing your your lettuce and your your green onions, which mm. I did I did for the first time spring 2020, and I'm still doing, and it still is to me a miracle every time <laughs> these green onions regrow themselves. It's like it's a tiny miracle inside your home. So if you haven't hopped on that bandwagon, I really suggest listeners that you regrow your green onions and your lettuce um there are other things that works for too celery i didn't have that much success i'll be honest but yeah uh i don't know if our listeners remember last mm -hmm. last november i planted some plum trees um so that was definitely and you know got yeah. me got me to thinking about um patience because <laughs> they if i'm lucky they they'll bear fruit <laughs> right in like four or five years if I'm lucky that I'll I'll have plums to eat and so right. that's been that's been an exercise in thinking about patience um yeah we still have to redo the roof this year so I'm not doing anything permanent but definitely I have like many many like um you know crate mm -hmm. gardens planned that I can move around when we're throwing debris onto the ground where it won't get destroyed but 2022 is when I think my garden is really gonna get popping and then patience oh Amy. patience i love the patience, many year Amy. project yeah yeah 
I just love anything that draws my mind to believe in three years from now. <laughs> Sometimes that can feel so far away. To... Yeah, well, I was just telling you the other day, I think that I got myself this like four year planner and it's become this like beacon of like yeah. hope and like, <laughs> you know, because when you're kind of flipping through, it seems like a lot of time and very little time at the same time. Um, so yeah, I would suggest everyone out there, like instead of a one year planner, try bigger, try longer, you know, have patience, mm. <laughs> schedule stuff in for four years from now and see what happens between now and then. <laughs> Right. I, the, it's patience and it's also really mm -hmm. faith. Like I, it takes faith for me to believe in a month from now sometimes, you know, like it takes faith for me to believe in a couple years from now. And, and also just imagination. Like I, I, I can be so caught up in my work and what I'm trying to accomplish and trying to do a good job and trying to be a good mom and trying to do a good job of interviews and writing and editing and, and like make the magic that I have promised or something like that. Like I, I really am somebody who, who can get caught up in that. And so I, I just to go back to the use of ritual and ritualizing daily life. I mean, I think a, I, I'm a firm believer in a planner. Like my, my online calendars are layered and many and intense. And then my handwritten planner like gets me through a day. But I'm going to switch to the four-year planner because I love this idea of like, I'm putting it in the calendar. Yeah. 2024. Yeah. <laughs> and and like, like I was saying, like, it's like, um, also like, it's like a great eraser of future regrets because there were a couple of things like, you know, mid-January, I was like, oh, I forgot to do this and that for Yule or Christmas or whatever I was thinking. So I just went ahead and wrote it in the next year. <laughs> you know, I've like prevented my, my future self from having the same regret that I had this year going into next year. So it's, it's quite a magical tool. So really. at what point, <laughs> it really is. So at what point do you buy the next one? Like, so that, you know, in two years from now, you can still be scheduling four years out. This is maybe not oh, an appropriate no. question for the podcast, but my practical mind is like, how many do I line up? <laughs> and you know, you know, it's funny because a friend of mine and I were just talking about seven year cycles. She had been re reading a bunch of science about seven year cycles. Yes. And mm -hmm. we were talking about this idea of sort of like giving birth to yourself every seven years, you know, not a very strict timeline, but ju and just, just as an idea, you know? So something about when you asked me that question made me think yeah. like, maybe I need a seven year planner, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know. Like I had never thought about, <laughs> I had never right. thought about this like continual Uberus snake eating its own tail of needing new journals all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just one. thought, yeah, I just like thought, every year you need to do one so that four years I can, you can plan. <laughs> I can always be planning four years in advance. You know, up until this very moment, I thought like I would feel it. I would get to, you know, 2024 and get another one. But now, now I'm a bit freaked out. Listeners, you weigh can, in. You can <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listeners, email us at gmail.com. What should I do? Science witches. Oh my gosh. And science witches, remind us what the thing about seven years is and tell me, because I'm going to get it wrong. I, I, From what I understand, so many parts of the body um, have to be constantly regenerating themselves. They're all doing it on different cycles. Um, skin and hair and teeth and bone and all of those cells are regenerating on different time cycles. But every seven years you've gone through it all. And so everything is new. Is that, tell us, tell us if that's correct. I don't know if it, I feel if I'm even close, but write us something and we'll, we'll be so happy to share it with other people. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on the topic of faith, I think um, in addition to the four year planner, I think something that has been super useful to me is um, learning about these witches for the podcast and, and for the book. Um, because surely my gosh. Uh, every every single one of them has had cause to lose hope and yet you know did not um yeah. so 
Yeah, you know, we, we, we say this all the time that we're sort of, a, 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 have always been on like a quest for role models. And that's kind of the thrust, you know, right. <laughs> this, yeah. Uh, yeah. Th this radical perseverance that like I can only hope to like echo in some small way. Yeah. Yeah. And like, how did they find that strength? Or, you know, sometimes perseverance uh, is a map that looks better you know, from 50 years later, like we, we don't see the, the pain and the agony, but we do kind of get left with the trace of the effect of their day-to-day -day decisions to like continue to share art with us, to continue to like be honest about their ideas and their experiences of the world and practice the magic of their lives, you know? I mean, truly that's, that that has kept me surviving this pandemic year and and pregnancy and everything sort of fucked up that's happened and beautiful <laughs> that's happened since we started this has been just holding on to the the an, initial kernel of the whole idea of missing which is this like to educate myself and to find these people I was literally missing in my heart you know yeah and not just yeah. in my heart but in my education you know like you and I yeah both, more so even yeah, yeah you and I <laughs> both have like extensive post-secondary educations and most of the people we were like who what wow like so many times we said to like how have we not yeah. heard of this person before like how is this not a household name but I do want to bring up since you since you mentioned like at the beginning of this journey I actually went back into my emails to see I think we talked about it on the phone first but the official first email you sent me about the missing witches project was almost three years to the day before the day that our book comes out in march wow and uh, i found that extremely That's interesting wild. as well yeah. yeah almost three years to yeah. the day that's wild yeah. I mean, it's so crazy to me because I was like actively doing, I was at the, the height of my most sort of diligent practice of things I was studying about magic, you know, um, and by that, I just mean like, I was sitting alone and meditating. I was using, you know, certain things on, on, an, on a beautiful space that I, was my desk that I called my altar and inside little witch cupboards I had other spaces and I was sewing hand sewn little satchels to put sigils and things I had drawn and little things from around my house that represented what I wanted with what I had written and like I was really working to and things that I was writing about were to be able to spend time researching the ideas and spirituality of women and marginalized people people marginalized like we literally wrote that and then would go over i would write that and go over to your house and play music and share books and ideas and it and i mean we create what we created what we had wished for but it's to the idea of writing a book to me at that moment was such a dream, like truly like a lifelong crazy pit in my stomach desire dream that felt like it had to happen and I could never make it happen, you know? So to be at this point where it's like done and they're sending it off to reviewers, it's just like, what, what, what year is it? Where's my seven year planner? <laughs> yeah. What's happening? Yeah. 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 It's fucking bananas. It, it is bananas. And I, I, I just, I mean, I, 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 we've said this to our listeners before, but like, I just want to remind you all that Risa and I didn't, didn't set out to write a book. You know, we started out writing e emails, like I say, and you know, those, yeah. those emails become podcast scripts and then those podcast scripts you know, in part, there's a lot of new stuff in there for those of you who are avid listeners and are still going to read the book. We appreciate your, like, your loyalty. There's a lot of new stuff in there for you, but some of it is drawn from some of our favorite episodes, you know, some yeah. of our uh, favorite writing that we did before. But uh, I, but what's so thrilling to me is that through this process, you, you and I have discovered um, 
um, so many uh, witch collaborations, like, you know, two of our favorite books that we bring up all the time are Great Cosmic Mother, yeah. which was Monica Show and Barbara Moore. And then also um, Witches, Midwives and Nurses, which was Barbara yeah. Ironreich and uh, Barbara English. Barbara? Ironreich in English. Deirdre English, thank you. I knew Barbara was was Barbara more, but yeah, these these ideas of like witches working together and making a book, and now to even think of us again in small echoing some small echoing way, as part of that yeah. lineage is like super emotional for me. You yeah, know? it's so emotional. I and and touches so many parts of my emotional life. Like even just to think um, of this sort of the stereotype somehow of women not being good collaborators and statistically like women not starting businesses together at the same rate that men do um, or collaborations and, you know, the, all of the kind of layers of inherited bias that, that contribute to that, but to have just sort of so joyfully been able to collaborate and had so much just relaxed fun with our publisher. I mean, literally writing, like looking, I've talked about this in the podcast before, but like looking for a, a soulmate editor and a soulmate publisher and, and feeling like those things just walked into our lives. So that gives me so much hope when I am in need of it, <laughs> that the, there really is so much power in being just deeply honest and like dirty, honest, explicit with yourself, brave, honest about what you fucking want to do, what you are capable of, what you want to do. And, um, and speaking of, do. speaking of honesty, like you remember Risa that my, the first question I asked our to be editor, they hadn't picked us up at the time, you know, our very first meeting, mm -hmm. one of my first questions was how do we make a book? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> how do we make a book I asked Jillian and yeah. uh and yeah. yeah you can be that honest and sometimes it, it yeah. helps sometimes it helps yeah yeah I mean that's how we got that whole publishing deal also it was like <laughs> going on a, a Facebook group and be like I think this thing I've done should be a book <laughs> how do I do that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. internet friends yeah. And I mean, just, yeah. you know, to, to work backward, like for sure, um, people who have reached out to us before the book deal, who had been reaching out to us to let us know, like, you know, um, your, your podcast made me realize that my art making was always witchcraft. Um, your mm -hmm. podcast made me reach out into my own, you know, ancestral lineage, your podcast, uh, you know, it gave me hope. Your podcast was a, a beacon of light in a dark time for me. Like, and to me, um, having having grown up under the assumption that nobody cared about what I had to say, um, I definitely think if you had told me th like two, three years ago, like sit down and write a book, I would have had a panic attack, and you never would have gotten the manuscript. Mm -hmm. But if if I like, you know write, you know, 5,000 words and I put it out there and somebody goes, wow, you know, that, that actually really spoke to me. Then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll write 5,000 more and 5,000 more yeah. and 5,000 more. And I think that we can think of that as a metaphor too, you know, maybe if I do this little thing and then I'll do another little thing and another and another and yeah. another. And then three years later, you wake up and you've got a book coming out and like literally hundreds of thousands of downloads on a podcast that you didn't think anybody was going to listen to because why would anybody yeah. care about what you have to say, you know? And, and to be fair, we have done some some projects before in our lives that like maybe six people came to. So it was not an erroneous assumption on our part that nobody would come to the podcast. That was like based on many, you know, we're we're like people in our forties. Like we've done a lot of shit that nobody came to, or that like, you know, ten people came to, but one person told us it was cool and we felt in in that moment that like there was something close to the electricity of the thing that I was trying to do that almost happened in that room. And I learned about how I could be doing it better that would make it closer and just 
got closer a lot of the times it did not feel like I was getting closer to be fair oh. I, I will say I, I was doing one experimental piece on a stage one time and it was not being particularly well received <laughs> but you know a fellow a like-minded artist came up to me at the end and I think her compliment was like <laughs> and, you know I really carried this with me like she was like it was amazing how you just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> because I had, I had a concept and I was going to see it through, you know, I had a concept and I was yeah. going to see it through. And, and honestly, at that point, like, uh, you know, I don't think you and I particularly were super in bed. Like we've never paid for a, an advertisement, you know, like we've no. never gone the route of really like, being you know really super commodifying and buying into that whole thing of, of what we're doing um and because we, I think definitely you know, haven't definitely haven't quit our day jobs yeah definitely have not quit our day jobs still grinding and not, grinding and grinding not the kind of project this is yeah <laughs> uh, uh, yeah there and by the way like it's it's a pretty scary statistic like something like you know 99.9 percent .9 of published writers have second and third jobs um the arts as we have learned very harshly the arts are desperately undervalued um in our society and i think part of the reason is that because you know nobody's going to be an accountant for free but people will always be compelled to take whatever that is that's inside of them and make it into paint or poetry or you know mm sculpture yeah. or tapestry or pottery or ideas or so on and so on and so on yeah. it's something that we're always going to do but we definitely yeah that's what's it. that that Gillian or Gillian Welsh song that we love the, the we're gonna do it anyway even if it doesn't pay <laughs> there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I think yeah like we this whole thing was because you know um we saw something missing and we wanted to fill it for ourselves right and then the idea yeah. was like let's make it so that it, <laughs> I had some very unsuccessful tagline you remember like season two or something that I kept and my mouth kept stumbling over it so it never caught on oh but yeah but I like, don't remember what it was it was like something about like wanting to make sure that these the uh, like contemporary witches are not ever going to be missing something about you know recording with the 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 contemporary witches that we talk to in our in our witches found interviews like making sure that these voices don't get lost in the mm. same way that we perceive um the more historical people you know yeah um preventing oh that from happening yeah but, but like in a really catchy tag tagline <laughs> yeah it never um, got catchy that's why i think the tagline <laughs> It's subtext now. It's all subtext now. Um, but that does make me think I wanted to say when you're talking about people who've written to us that the podcast or have reviewed it, which I was just reading some of our podcast reviews and they're super touching. Oh, I, I um, have literally have never done take that. The time to write to us. Yeah. I find that so anxiety. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. You yeah. should do I'll it. They're not, do. they're not all good. Oh, yeah, they're not all good, but there, there's some good ones. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of good ones. People are amazing. I love humans. Even angry humans, I kind of love. But you can yeah. tell us why you're angry. We could probably be better. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but I was going to say, yeah, people who take the time to write to us in emails, those, those emails, like, some of them I haven't answered only because I'm too emotional rereading them and I reread them and I, they make me emotional and I think about them a lot and they sit in my life and in my stomach and they make me want to be better at my job. And then I realize like weeks and months have gone by and I haven't written back to that person who is like now in like a pantheon in my brain, a, a, a constellation of like how I'm trying to be better. Um, so if you wrote a letter to Missing Witches, and it's probably Amy that wrote back to you, sometimes I do, but if I didn't write back to you, um, 
yeah, just know you're in a constellation in my heart and my life. You're trying to be better as a human. Yeah. <laughs> That's my I'm, I'm definitely like a, like a, a strike while the iron is hot, because if I do start to think about it, I would become that like, you know, in the galaxy that you live in <laughs> for sure. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. no, but yeah. But I know that like my answer is not going to be perfect because sometimes people ask us for advice too, which also is like really moving to me because somebody actually yeah. like wants advice, you know, um, it's almost laughable. We're just so flawed. Yeah. yeah. We're just so flawed. <laughs> yeah. But there's so certain- and, and opinionated. We're flawed yeah. and opinionated. So yeah. well, we have a lot of advice, but yeah. we're <laughs> concerned that it's shitty those are two things you need to know um but just over pouring with thoughts about the universe and what you should probably do with your life yeah <laughs> so so no if you write me an email and i write you back that um i i haven't spent weeks thinking about it it was just you know um, my visceral reaction because again i i i know that and it's the same with the book you know there there are things i, I learn things every day that i wish you know, I could go back and put yeah. the book. Um, and it's the same kind of thing with answering emails. You know, if I, I could spend a thousand years and still not say everything I want to say. So I'm, I'm more likely yeah. to bang it out in five minutes so that at least there's something in the tennis game happening, you know? Yeah, I, I, I tried, I aspire to that. And I do it in a lot of parts of my life, but um, Missing Witches is one I have a hard time doing that with, possibly because you're so good at it. So I, I, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's also like how how we edit right i don't know if if listeners know this or care but fun facts um we we evolved after the first season pretty quickly into a rhythm where like we each are writing about half of the episodes and um doing our best with research although i got to work with an incredible researcher for this season so hopefully you'll feel the impact of amy's work amy towns booth's work yeah. um different amy. researching different amy yeah um but yeah so we we'll do a lot of research work on these scripts and drafts and then at some point in the process like fairly early on for me um like i try to get as close as i can and then it's like I just need you to look at this and just give me feelings. Just tell me your feelings. Like it's not an editorial process of like, um, give me fixes. Although if there's fixes to be made for sure, tell me it's like, I think we toss back and forth, um, a little bit just to like, help us get to the, get to the, get to the, the final heart of the thing, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and definitely it's not like you should say this here. Often it's like, I think there's something here about this, but I'm not sure what it is. Can you <laughs> figure it out and write a paragraph about that? <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite working with an editor where it's like, I have a question about this or like, tell me more here. Or just like, this gave me joy. <laughs> please expand <laughs> please expand yeah please expand gives makes our hearts sing so yeah when you're writing yeah. us and if you're writing us an email so many i we get these emails that are so long and they inevitably have several apologies in them about the length of the email mm -hmm. and so if you are planning on writing to us like please expand <laughs> just ex it's exactly please expand that is our response there's i mean a put your apologies wherever the fuck you want because they are a little spell of their own that gives us a little bit of permission to go further and deeper. So I have no judgment for apologies, but just know that um, our response is, I love you and please expand. <laughs> yes, I love you and please expand. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I guess like the thrust of this whole conversation for me is like, so much gratitude to the people who once again have made us feel like what we have to say is worth hearing um no part of this process would have continued um if you didn't and that is the fuel that fires both Risa and i just knowing that you actually believe that what we have to say is valuable and that to me is invaluable yeah, and that's a reflected faith, you know, kind of like the full moon to bring it back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a reflected faith, a reflected light that we're casting on each other. Like, our, we are we are such profound believers in the value of what you have to say 
and you writ like largely across space and time you you know people who have had ideas about spirituality and the universe and each other and community that were stuffed in the margins and buried like you we are so profoundly interested and we want you to please expand and when we hear from you that this project of ours helps you expand um that's what's giving us the sort of space and confidence to continue to expand as well so as always it's all about the coven <laughs> <laughs> i can't imagine a better ending than that shall we bid adieu to our listeners and <laughs> And to ask them, beg them, if you haven't already pre-ordered the book, it's going to be out next month. And oh my goodness, please check out our book. Yeah, uh, We really okay, love so it and we're really proud called... of it. Oh, right. The book is yeah. called... <laughs> The book is called Missing Witches, so that should be relatively easy to remember. It's literally the name of the podcast. Um, if you Google Missing Witches book, it's it's all over the front page, our publisher people have done a wonderful job about that there's a penguin random house link for both dot com and ca where you can pre-order um and, and then certainly yeah. love and encourage you to call your favorite local indie bookshop and request it and they'll order it for you and then let us know and we will like send them love on instagram and we we're just like we we love indie bookstores those are places we have spent a lot of time and gained a lot from and we love the people who work there and we love the communities they build um so if you can find an indie bookstore to support that'll get you this book and i think they will that's their whole thing they'll order you whatever book indie bookstores are amazing so um do that we want there, to hear about that um, i have one yeah. other favorite way to support the book which is um you know risa and i have a vast love of libraries and librarians if you've already bought the book you can still cruise to your local library and ask them to order it and that gives you an excuse to go to your local library Mm. it's been a long time since I was in a public library and now I'm like wistfully thinking about libraries but yeah um we are so oh grateful gosh. for libraries go ahead sorry yeah. I was just gonna say libraries throughout the states are doing curbside pickup Canada too we love libraries we love yeah. librarians it would just mean the world to see our book in a library how cool yeah that's exactly what I was gonna say Risa like we are so grateful for libraries um before the internet I know a lot of you who are listening um don't know these dark times but Risa and I are both old enough to remember when <laughs> when the library was the only game in town if you wanted to learn something so bless libraries, bless librarians. Now in the internet age, they are evolving into often becoming community centers. Um, yeah, so libraries, full moons, and drink a glass of water right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just listen deep in the, in the snow moon and the echoey snow moon and in the shadows, there is a voice saying, please expand. Please expand. Please expand. Because under this <laughs> hunger moon, we are hungry. We are hungry for you. Yeah. Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. Have an amazing full moon, everybody. And we will see you next month with our freaking book in our hands. And yeah, partying and a it whole up. brand new season that we're working yeah. on that we can't wait to share with you. So. Right. We didn't do any of yeah, that thanks. business stuff. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Another we season so, and it's great. <laughs> oh, oh, we are so bad at business. Oh, so bad. You must be a witch. If you want to support Missing Witches, you can do so by pre-ordering our book, Missing Witches by Risa Dickens and Amy Torek. Or you can look for our merch on T Public. Become a Patreon patron. Or use the offer code Missing Witches when you shop at foxglovefarm.com.